Example, yeast to be washed. This was a 1035 light beer that I made in ale. Everything sanitized, of course. Star sands. <clears throat> you got your one liter jugs or two liter jugs there. I feel like red green. This is me attempting to get off the plastic, you know. Sanitize the area that you're going to be playing around with. Now the two bottles you're about to see, I pre-boil these. I uh, stick about four to six of them into one of my big pots. A uh, couple weeks in advance, I've always got water sitting in mason jars ready to go. And then once they're cooled down, uh, just like as if you're preserving, the lid pops in. And... I stick them into my uh, the bottom uh, part of my beer fridge there, my kegerator. And when it's time to use them, all I do is pop them out and open them up and they're good to go and you've got sterilized water to wash your yeast with. And of course I bring them out of the fridge to let them cool down first, or uh, you know warm up a little bit so I don't shock the yeast too much. I don't know if that really matters though, but better safe than sorry, right? Safety first. This is me pouring the water into the carboy. Okay, green. Should have used my bigger funnel. Oh well. Didn't spill any. Oh, Gil needs his water. Lids back on just to make sure nothing gets into them. You're about to see some washing techniques. Grip your seats, people. Get ready. Here it comes. I have to put saran wrap around my uh, the necks there sometimes. Uh, I've got those uh, airlocks that uh, are orange, and they, f boy, am I a bad cameraman, <laughs> that fit on. And sometimes you're not snug enough on that uh, carboy, most, or mostly for some reason, different size neck than the other ones, I guess. Alright, I put a piece of cardboard under it because in the past I've learned that uh, shaking that sucker around on my wooden bench, it uh, takes the varnish off, scuffs it, then I get scuffed. There's just one way you can do it. You can sit there and do that for three minutes or we're going to pan to another section here and I'll show you how I do it. There you go. I swirl it around really fast. You'll see me really get going on her. You do this for about three minutes there before you uh, you separate it. I didn't go for the full three minutes. I just showed you a few seconds of it. The idea of what to do. But do it for about three minutes. Close to it. <clears throat> now you can see everything all mixed up. Creamy. Ooh, creamy. There wasn't a lot of trouble in this one because it was a low uh, OG. But you could see it. It was uh, Your trub is always darker than your uh, yeast. Now I pour it into those jugs. Sometimes I have enough to pour into two jugs. Depending on how much beer I had left behind there. And I let it settle uh, 15 minutes in the jugs. By the way, I let it settle 15 minutes in the carboy before I poured it into the jugs. Exactly 15 minutes, anywhere between 15 and 20. That gets a lot of the trub to fall to the bottom. Then I do the second step just to make sure that I'm getting yeast and no trub into my, uh, into my uh, mason jars when I pour it into that. So I'm going to cover it again when you'll see here in a bit. And I'll let it sit for another 15 minutes.
do 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 use that for your enjoyment. Do 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 So after washing it in the carboy, 15 minutes. Between 15 and 20. And then you do the same in the jug. Another 15 minutes in the jug. Covering her up with saran wrap there. <clears throat> Elastic to keep everything out. I'm not Mr. Fancy Pants. I haven't got uh, any hair elastics to use. Oh my god, who's that ugly guy? Now I'm actually going to try and recover more of that yeast. I'll end up putting it into the other jug there, but I'm not going to bother showing you guys that. It'll sit for another 15 minutes while that jug sits for 15 minutes. I'll pour it into a second one. I'll use it to top up the uh, mason, uh, the one mason jar. Anybody get the feeling they're watching one of their old home movies? It's like somebody narrating it in 8mm and no sound. Ah, there's the lovely mason jars. It's been 15 minutes, people. Damn, that was a quick 15 minutes. <laughs> get back there. We don't need no stinky cardboard. down and stayed in the camera. There, we're back. I don't let the jug touch the side of the mason jars. Try to keep everything as clean as possible. We're gonna flow! That one's done. As I'm pouring, I'm looking for the darker parts, which is the trub. In this case here, you had the light creamy stuff, and then you saw a really dark, uh, I think you can see it at the back there. You'll see that dark uh, line at the very bottom. That's the trub. Like I said, there wasn't a lot of trub in this one. It was a low gravity beer, and it didn't take much to wash it out. That'd be it, and that's uh, all the trub that's left. And people, that is just about it. That's how easy it is to wash yeast. If I can do it, anybody can do it. Give her another try, Craig. I wouldn't bother with uh, dry yeast, but I definitely do it with the expensive uh, liquid yeast. Cheers.